What is up everyone, Tyler here and I'm back with another video. Not only today are we going to work on the 240, but we're going to be doing stuff to the G as well. So all of you guys asking for G videos, it's going to be both of the cars. Yes. Before we get into anything though, I want to address the quality of the video. You guys might be able to notice that it is very blown out. In order for you guys to see, I have to put the aperture all the way up for now. Although you guys could see some spots around this area. That is due to me not having an ND filter. In the previous video, I had an ND filter to like block out the light, but I returned it to get a variable ND filter so I could change it around. So don't mind those spots on the lens throughout this video because it kind of annoys me. For one or two videos, I'd have to deal with it. Let's get to it though. Here we are in the garage and yes, I have new wheels there. It's only a pair. These are SSR Agile Minerva. I don't know if I said that right. Yeah. These are some cool three-piece wheels. The specs are kind of weak, to be honest. With three-piece wheels, you could always make it to your desired spec. Not sure if I'm gonna do that in this case because I might be selling them already. The specs are 18, nine, plus 24. Yeah. These are wheels that I would want in the future, but not the finish and spec that I would want. They are pretty nice though. I'll be test fitting both of these on the 240 and G. Over here, got some spacers to fit on these bad boys. The 240 has five spacers in there, equaling out to 35 mil. I got a 38. The filament will be just perfect once I do that. For both of these cars, I'm gonna try it on in the rear and front. Look at that. This is what I'm on right now. <laughs> Hanging on by just the right amount of thread. Way more safer now. <laughs> Look how much thread is showing. Super good. Oh man. Alright, I need to take out one spacer still because it is. Yeah, you can't move anything. Oh my god. But boy. Here's the look on the 240 with the fitment. Pretty much as close as can be. This fitment will do for now, just to see how it looks, and then I'm gonna move on to the G. Oh man. Oh. Oh my god. How do I feel about them? I already know I need wood. Oh, I kind of like it. Oh my god. What? I have so much more space to go. What the hell? So the fitment's really bad right now. I need to take that spacer out and put a 35 mil because that's 26. But bro, like, if I look at it from here, or just anything to the side, oh my god. I'm pretty in love with this right now. I didn't think I would. Yeah, let's, let's see though. I definitely like them more on the G though. Fitment is slowly getting better. This is a 35 from a 26. So that's like nine millimeters more out. I think I need like another nine, honestly. Luckily, so I have this 35, I could keep on stacking these smaller spacers I have, which comes in handy. 
Oh yeah. All right, the fitment's pretty <laughs> close now. Like for front fitment, this is pretty good. Um, it might be too much though, cause I have an angle kit, and when I turn, it'll probably bend the fenders a little. I don't know which one to pick. My mind's a little set on the G because I don't really like it on the 240 because I have Model 5s already. But I'm really wondering like if I really, really want the wheels. It makes me sit a significant amount lower. Since I have my mind narrowed in on the G, let me know what you guys think if I should keep them on the G or sell them. I've concluded that I'm running the Model 5s all around. Since I had some extra spacers running around, I am using a quarter inch spacer, two 3 mils, and a 20 mil. Yeah, that's a whole bunch of thread showing like on the nut, but I don't think I'm going to drive this car as my daily right now. This is just so I could use this big spacer for the G. Then. Right, uh, right after this, I'm going to order some spacers so that I don't have to do this sketchness because there's no way. Some of you may already know this, but I have an angle kit. And one thing that I found out recently is that I broke a sensor. This is the ABS speed sensor. It's because I had it clipped in where the coilover was normally and it like snapped. It was a $20 fix. I have the new sensor right here yeah and when i installed the angle kit i didn't bother doing the sway bar but i think i'm gonna do that now since the car's up so oh my god <laughs> <laughs> he scared me <laughs> damn the sway bar connected way easier than i expected i don't know why i haven't had it on this whole time but i just sent it no torch back you know i don't know but yeah this thing's about to go on the ground see how it drives Which car am I gonna choose to drive to work out today? Ooh. They both look good, but I'm gonna take the G. While I'm here though, I'm gonna show you guys the paint. So this whole thing is detailed pretty good. It sat outside, so it's kinda pollen y. It looks good, but you can still see the bird poo in some lights, sadly. Ten times is better before because the paint did not pop as much. On the other hand, here's the G. It is low. Taking it for a good old drive to my workout spot. It's going to be very bad because I was working on it and forgot I had a dentist appointment and almost missed that. The drive there was completely terrible. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. You know what the sucky thing is? Today I was supposed to adjust my seatbelt because it sometimes comes loose and then gets undone and I am i don't have a seatbelt. It's just hand tight. Here's another portion or segment that I'm gonna be driving in. Oh god. Scrape right here. Oh, yikes. I do hit reflectors now. My subframe is very low. Um, if you guys are familiar with tire sizes, I went from uh, a 235 slash 225 around there. 
now my tire size is a 20540 so it is a pretty big difference um, I think the key tire size for my car is 215 to where I can have my fitment on point and be semi low This road sucks balls too. Sheesh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't think I showed you guys this yet. That's how low I am to the ground. Pretty decently low. I'd, I'd say it's comparable to my bumper. Yeah. See, the thing is, the whole point in this video was to show how useful spacers were and the ability to have those smaller spacers to pinpoint where the best fitment that's drivable for you is. Because today was a whole lot of experimentation. I mentioned in a previous video that the PBM slip-on spacers were a good option. Yet I have never even tried them. I thought of it as a good idea so I recommended it. But after having two cars and I interchange the spacers, I don't think as of right now the PBM is a good option because the spaces that I get from Amazon are about like 40 bucks no matter what size it is for my car and PBM that you tack on a hundred dollars and it's I think it only extends to 30 mil spacers again the slip on spacers like the cheap ones that I have aren't really for permanent use it is to gauge what the best millimeter or inch size you should get because right now I have a 20 mil 35 mil and a 38 mil. I have to order another 35 mil for the G. Then I'll be set because the 240, I tested it out in the front and rears. It needed specific sizes and I got it. With that said, if you're definitely trying to get your fitment looking good, I'd recommend these spacers. They're not a name brand spacer. They're pretty inexpensive. I'm gonna have links in the descriptions. You don't have to use those links if you don't want to. They're affiliate links. I know that was a decent amount of me rambling on but I'm gonna get to my workout and catch you guys later in the video. That was a pretty relaxing break of editing. I think I've finally decided. This is about an hour before I'm about to upload, so current Tyler here. I may be keeping the wheels and I'm getting a surprise soon today. I am on three hours of sleep and I still have to drive to this place while I'm really tired. That's besides the point though, the reason why I am updating you guys right now is I want to answer you guys' questions because I missed an upload on Tuesday, so I postponed it to today. 14 comments, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Are you done building the G? It is close to it, like after I have the wheels I want, all the suspensions done and I'm going to keep the VQ in it for a while. I think the only thing that's left is if I'm serious about drifting, then weld the diff. 
ultimate plan for both of the cars. 240 started off as a daily, then a drift car. The G drift slash street car. Right now, both of them are set up as daily drivers. What age did I start driving? I think I started driving when I was 15 and a half. What do you have for your exhaust? I'm assuming it's for the G. It's literally straight pipe from the Y pipe back or cat's back. What are you going to school for? I am technically going to school for graphic design. This year I've been on a break. I did get accepted to SF State and I might take it. I might not. I'm more on the side of not going to school and trying to pursue my own path. <laughs> it will not be an easy job. I can already tell from this year off I have had. There's a whole bunch of ups and downs you have to go through. Why, why your car look like it don't know how to walk straight? Camber. How's driving with the camber on the G? It's not, it's like a regular car. Sometimes you do lose traction and it's kind of scary. That is all for the questions. There were some repeat ones, that's why I didn't mention them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me putting on the wheels and showing you guys how I use spacers. It's pretty simple. I thought it would be useful to you guys. I do in fact have an old video about spacers. I'm positive this one's better and more informative. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.